All right, welcome back. And we're still talking about if uh, Kenya ingeza kuwa na prezo mwenye ako below 35 years. What are some of the different things is in Gekua? And uh, I'd like us to uh, go back to uh, what we were talking about. Um, for example, uh, I remember previous, uh, in the previous session, there's one who mentioned uh, President uh, Jomo Kenyatta brought out a lot of good things that have actually been taken over by other presidents. He also added those Moe Kibaki. He, he, had, he was very instrumental as well in terms of leadership and borrowing from a young leader perspective. What are some of the good memories you have of uh, our presidents in regards to even World Presidents Day? Uh, th thank you so much. When Kenya got the independence, Jomo Kenata was very specific on what he, need, he needed in Kenya because he said that our enemies were poverty, ignorance, and disease. Exactly. And from the very beginning, you could see it in every project that he launched, everything he did. Right. But later, of course, we know there will be some divisive politics. They would divide with uh, Oginga, Odinga, and of course, then uh, Jomo Kenyatta would later pass on. Then we had President Moi come in. When you go down in history, you look at the earlier days of Moi, and Kenya did very well. We had a lot of, around uh, 1970, we had the coffee boom, and our economy was doing perfectly well. Of course, later in around 1990, there were the multi-party calls and everything, and our, our economy was on the downturn, but later we will have Kibaki. And when Kibaki came in, Kibaki did a lot of economic reforms. He introduced the free primary education that we are enjoying till now. And of course, I know Kenyans are very much appreciative of that. When, Kija, when Kibaki left power, he left our debt at 1.8 trillion. Right. Of course, we had uh, the Kenyan... Slightly below. Yeah, slightly okay. below. Right. When uh, Huru Kenyatta came in and William Ruto, they took that debt from 1.8 trillion to about 8.4 trillion. And that is the current situation that we are in. So we give Kibaki a lot of credits for how he ran our economy. Right. And of course, uh, we, we could criticize the former government for just trying to mess around the economy, especially on the issue of the debt. Okay. And I think that is something that uh, the current president, William Ruto, is trying to solve because uh, just the other day they were introducing the budget policy statement in right. uh, parliament. And you can see that he's trying to reduce our deficit from about 900 billion to around 600 billion. So the 300 billion there, I think he's doing well currently. All right. Sure. Yeah. Good, good sentiments right there. Yes, activists. So first, I want to appreciate this, the late President Mwai Kibaki. Because when he came to power in 2002, the Kenyan GDP was, uh, let me say, below 1%. But he increased it to around eight, around eight percent. So he really performed. He's the one that introduced these, these uh, constituency development funds. It has really helped the. It has really helped the citizens. It has uh, really helped students. For example, a good example is myself here. When I went to high school. My parents could not uh, afford that school fees. So when I applied to bursary as MPs, and I was applying school fees. So I really appreciate him for the good work he did to this nation. And um, I can't say that uh, the remaining presidents did not perform, but there's something they did not do for this nation to remain stable. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, let's switch gears. Uh, like I mentioned about Sakaza. Uh, I love the fact that this guy, Anafanya TikTok, like we really can relate to him in so many avenues. I remember Juzi Amekutana na Naituadze, uyu TikToker, Priscilla. Uh, do you feel like in a letter of vibrancy and currency of like inclusivity of young people, especially when it comes to uh, young people who are included in matters leadership as well, even you who is still at campus as a leader, do you see yourself even in the near future holding such positions due to like we have people like Sakaja you mentioned as well? Uh, thank you so much. And uh, just before I get to that, allow me just correct something. Activists said something about the GDP being 1% and again 8%. Uh, I think it's not right to say that. We cannot say that the GDP is 1%. I think 
it was the economic growth. He came in when it was around 1.6%, then while he was leaving, it was around... Hold your mic close. Yeah. 8% when he was leaving. So the growth was a little bit uh, higher. Uh, back to what Sakwa has asked about the vibrancy of the leadership. I think Sakaja is doing pretty well currently because he is so much famous with the youth. And the same we can credit to people like Babu. And of course, recently we had the CS David Osian. He always right. has some Walimu Chronicles on Facebook. Right. And people are able to relate with him. And he makes fun. And people are able to understand what the government is doing. And right. I think Sakaja is doing well. When he got to TikTok, I think he got around more than 300K followers just in a day. Right. So I think... Uh, th and th th that is an advice to many politicians out there. Get into the spaces where the youth are and get to talk to them, get to relate with them. Yeah, uh, I'd like to also hear your feedback on <laughs> about Lynette Toto. I'm going to keep controversial remarks. Usually I'm engaged. Was he proposed to? I'm engaged. I don't know which one happened. And then, I'm going to say, hey, she was too serious. But then they're like, leave her alone. She's just young. I'm going to into leadership. Juicy. Do you feel like even young people sometimes, uh, when you're an aspire, could get into these positions? They're not even prepared for some of the things that they will meet in the leadership. I remember it's Gloria Roba, who uh, she was also trending for Alcon advocate for uh, period shame in Parliament. Alcon Asema, if you're young, then you have to be ready to take up this with a lot of warfare. So, uh, do you feel like uh, put a lot of negative luck because they're just young, and yet we want them to take up leadership positions? So, the case of uh, Lena Choto, uh, I believe that she's one of the youngest women rep in this nation. Yes, she is. Yes, yeah. Yes, she is. So, when she got into when she got into power, she was uh, she was young and she was not uh, informed of what happens in that leadership position. She did not have any experience. So, but at least she is trying to inspire more Kenyans, more young people, that they can also, they can also lead her together with the, the MP for Mias, Peter Salasia, Peter mm -hmm. Salasia. Yeah. These people are, are really trying to come up with, they are really trying to hold the hands of the young Kenyans Anna Peter Salasia is al he's always with the youths. He's promoting football clubs in Mias. Now Anafanya, yeah, he's taking children to school. S same as to this, the the one you mentioned, Sakaja. Hmm. I saw the other day Sakaja sitting with a, a sweet child in in his office. Right. I think he's he's doing pretty well. And um, the other day he was in Busia and Leona. He took a there, there was a child that was unable to join secondary school. He took him since he had passed well his exams. So these real, these young Kenyans are really working, and uh, we as the we as uh, young Kenyans who are still the youths, this one about to Koshulani, we need to come up like them. Na we should be empowered by what they are doing. Right. Now, let's get back to you uh, from where you come from. Um, in terms of, uh, you, you said you're an activist, and I'd like you to share what, your, what you, or you, you talk about a lot in your activism work. What are some of the things you talk about before we get ahead? <laughs> so, in my activism, you know me, I'm a, I'm a very vocal and vibrant person. But you cannot just know through, because I'm always very polite. Now, mimi ni mpole, but and my deeds are you know, always <laughs> very vocal. So, so what are you vocal about? <laughs> <laughs> so, more so in, in school, I'm the University of Nairobi and I'm still in second year. I'm advocating for the rights of comrades. Na mimi napigania haki za young people. Okay. So when I, when I see that a person is being oppressed, I don't keep quiet. Mm. And that's why I like talking. Okay. Yeah. In fact, um, at, some, some, at some point, 
nasema it is better i die but i must fight you for must the right of up. this person yeah right. and i am yeah. being empowered empowered by those activists that fought for the rights of people such as uh patrice lumumba this malema you see malema is performing well in the south, south african Africa. member of parliament yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and th th those are the people i follow in okay. fact when you visit my tiktok account oh you have is, a tiktok as well. i have a tiktok okay. account with 14,000 followers. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I normally post there those people, the li likes of Babu Owino. Right. Yeah, when it comes to fighting for the rights of those people who are oppressed, up of Sinanga jokes. Right. Sinanga jokes, Kabisa, yeah. But do you see yourself in Gava <laughs> in future? Because, <laughs> you know, uh, you, know you, you start like that, you know? For me, I believe that uh, leadership comes from God. And... Okay. Um, I better, you know, for me, I don't, I don't sell the false promises to people. Right. And that's the challenge you are having as Kenyans. Okay. You know, Kenyans need to be told what they, 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 what they want to hear and not what it is right for them. All right. So I don't go to people telling them that I will do this. You know, I cannot promise a cow by the time I can only offer a chicken. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge with Kenyans. Okay. So... I believe that uh, when within the way of politics, I can be one of the best leaders because I speak the truth. I don't promise what I cannot give. Okay. I only promise what is in my capacity. Right. Yeah. Now, so we, when we change our ways of politics towards manifesto-based politics, okay. then I can be one of the best leaders. Like you can learn that okay. I will give you this, I will give you job. Now call it Stakupatia. Right. Then I see something not right. Okay. okay. I, I, I wanted to actually know if you are to be the president of this country tomorrow, what are some of the things that you would change that have been there for a very long time from a young people's perspective? Of course, the question is uh, at least 35 years. If you, let's imagine you're in that age bracket and you were to be the president, what are you changing first in the country? Like we can give Papi Metoka. <laughs> when I'm, I'm given the opportunity to be the president of this country, the first thing I will do is to do away with the... You know, in this Kenya, young people have been neglected. So they don't have space. And the main thing that leads into this is unemployment. You see, we have very many unemployed youths. And they are being taken advantage of. So now, after Monasia Sakitembea, you normally use these vijana as goons. So I will, I will really do something to ensure that these people are employed. The young people who are going to school, I, I will really empower the youths. This, this money, kuna, there is a lot of money just circulating in the government. Kuna pesa apu. You see, I cannot. I cannot, you know, I cannot keep on watching someone earning, earning two million, four million in a month, na, and escape paying tax, na, and you get a young person who is struggling to stand up, and a pata pesa kidogo lakini yende na finiliwa, that we want tax, we want tax, now we escape taxes. Right. So, ndio kitu wenye, I would really advocate for. Okay. Yeah. For the young people to have voices, and to take these leadership positions. You know, I use my ministry. So that they also put their young people. Okay. Yeah. Right. Got you. <laughs> I love your passion. <laughs> yes, Peter. As we even we are preparing ourselves, uh, and I love the fact both of you have a, a leadership position at your universities. If you guys were to actually take over and, 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 and be leaders in this country, tomorrow. What are some of the reforms, positive reforms, that you guys are going to, to embrace? Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Brian. If I was supposed to be president, then I will not only be a youth president, but I'll be a president of the country. Allow me to take you back to the 2004 Democratic National Convention at the United States of America. And Obama is there vying for senator in Illinois, and he's delivering a speech. And that speech is known as the speech that made Obama president. 
And as part of the speech, you hear Obama saying that we are not a black America or a white America or a Latin America. We are the United States of America. So it's not just about being youth or being a lady or being old. It's about being a Kenyan. And I think we need to get that very, very clear. Right. When you talk about the president being 35 years or below, we need to look at it in terms of experience and in terms of the nationhood. So I think the first thing that I would love to actually address is the kind of divisiveness that is currently in our country. Right. Where some people feel that they are part of government, they are not part of government, they are Kikuyu, they are Luya, they are Kalenjin. We need to be Kenya. Right. And I think that is what the current government is not getting right, especially because of the sentiments that you had yesterday. So I think the first thing is to unite the country. All right. We need to unite this country. Yeah. Of course, the second thing that, of course, would help the youth is the government internship, pro internship programs right. that the government has been talking about. But I think there's a problem with the implementation right. because you get that some interns are not being paid. And of course, there is also a lack of a fairness in giving the internships. I think we need to get somewhere as a country where we have graduates getting out of the university. They get absorbed, perhaps not on a full employment, but could, let's say a one-year internship program. The same same way we see with the medicine students. So I think that is something that uh, I would love to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, on, the, on the other side, on the flip side as well, uh, they talk about mentorship. And uh, like you said, experience is the best teacher. And uh, what actually disqualifies a lot of young people from, you know, a lot of opportunities because they're looking for someone who has five years experience, duly graduate, which year. But still, you can't still uh, fall into that age bracket or, or those qualifications as well. <coughs> when it comes to mentorship, you could prepare young people to get to this leadership sport. Do you feel like we have enough forums in our country and enough platforms that nurture talent, nurture leadership skills uh, as compared to like even outside countries. Of course, a kid will grow up in a president's family. Of course, they'll end up automatically becoming a deputy president or whatever. Even when you look at uh, the history of uh, the previous leadership systems in the world, it has always been like it's inherited. It goes from father to son to mother. Same to wealth, father, inherited, grandchildren, etc. Uh, th thank you so much, Brian, for that question. Uh, I'm an avid reader of the Obama books, and again, I would like to refer to what he said sometimes back. And he says, no one cares about how your upbringing was. No one cares where you come from, and no one cares where you've, what you've gone through or who are your parents or such. So I, I think one of the things that our youth should be able to know is that nobody is going to give you, nobody is going to serve you food. You have to work to get there. Our government is doing well in trying to create opportunities for the youth. Of course, we know that there are some areas that uh, they need to do better. But I think one responsibility that the youths have, I've been able to deal with uh, students there at the university. And at times, you get a company requesting CVs and uh, perhaps some documents so that they can be employed or so. And at times, the qualities of the CVs that you get from students are worrying. And I think those are some of the things we need to address. Right. This world is not going to bend because of who you are. You need to make sure that you prepare yourself to that level. Right. So there are places where our government can do better, but there are some places where they're doing well. And I think our students, they need just to make sure that they prepare themselves well. All right. Uh, I think we'll have to end it there. So your final remarks where people can find you as well as we exit. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, my name is Peter Nguka. I'm currently the main campus governor at University of Nairobi. First of all, to my comrades watching me here today, let me say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to serve you. I'll be exiting in one month, and I'm really very much appreciative for the opportunity. To the next governor who is coming on board, Make sure that you do your best, serve the comrades, make sure the comrades' interest is fast, and continue with what we had started. Thank you. All right, activist. Uh, thank you for this moment again. Uh, I really appreciate for, but before I do that, 
allow me to argue to allow me to disagree with my brother nguka in less than a minute please yeah. you my brother nguka is saying that uh, we need to look at this experience you know we are misusing we are misusing this proverb in asema that you must have an experience no because you you see for me to be employed in a in an industry even in this kbc Okay. What did, what do they need? They need an experience, okay. a three year experience. Where will I get this experience? And since there is no one willing to employ me in a year experience, we need to work on that. Okay. Yeah, so and then finally you you can find me in all social media platforms. Right. I'm in Facebook, TikTok. Uh you can just type the word activist Otieno. I'm a well known person there at Naza Patana and for the comrades of the University of Nairobi I'm sincerely I'm sincerely the incoming president the incoming governor of the University of Nairobi main campus and I want to promise you that when I will succeed Ngoka the governor the current governor I want to appreciate you for what you have done and uh, I can't really judge kama umeperform ama not okay. but for me i'm determined so i'm coming there for so comrades so and i'm coming to work with the comrades okay. nataka Na, serikali iko tu ya comrade atutaki mambo nyingi so hii so mambo ya comrade kuinama hii mambo ya comrade siju i've i've had that say with okay. a missing mark you right. cannot you cannot nini continue okay. the next semester so okay, okay. thank you i'm um, making a point uh, so. gentlemen thank you so much for your time let me just sample quick uh, your feedback uh, on facebook uh, anaitwa shinyabi hilary ke is saying good morning kwanza nani atapea vijana mdogo kura i think that's regarding to our question dorcas marsh is saying good morning good morning to you uh, mato kikuyu gatuna you're saying watching ni kikuyu thank you uh, we have sinta or there you're saying good morning amazing discussion indeed what will happen there will be changes surely tuning from naivasha and shout out to you sinta and then lastly we have emma james when i say my kenyans youth fresh from colleges fall under the age bracket of really 70 and above uh, age uh, i don't think so and above and that's when they qualify for state appointment wow okay but thank you for your feedback uh, thank you so much keep on watching y254 and i think we'll close it up uh, see you tomorrow for entrepreneurship tuesday my name is brian sako have a fantastic monday